Hi, everyone. I'm Mary, and today we'll be watching the next episode of Glitch Tale. This is Season 2, Episode 3, Do or Die. Now, I'm sorry. Sans fucking died in the last episode. What the hell are we going to do? Because that was freaking Episode 2 of the season, and we're on Episode 3. I have no idea where the hell they're going to escalate from here, because what the hell? If it seems like I'm a little blown away, it's because I am. I don't know what we're getting into here. I thought Sans dying would be a bigger event way later. Granted, reveal of the villain is a good one. But the more I think about it, the more I'm just going, this is setting a precedent. I'm assuming everyone dies. Granted, the main character Frisk did actually die multiple times. So that is actually a thing that has been established in the first season. But that was with Reset around. Basically what I'm saying is, I don't know what's going on. We're going to find out. This is probably going to be a giant clusterfuck of crazy, and I'm looking forward to it. You guys know what to do. The link below to the original video. Hit it up, and yeah, let's get started. I just want to apologize for what I said earlier. Who's speaking? Frisk or someone else? I've always relied on my belt. It's Frisk. Fix mistakes. Make things better. It's too hard to let go of that all of a sudden. And she doesn't know he's dead, or is she talking to a grave? Monsters get graves. Don't want to hurt anyone. You to get hurt. Well, oh, she's definitely talking to Sans then. Or what she or he. Would you forgive me, Sans? Probably, and that's the worst part. Also the worst. This isn't going to work. No, no, it's really not. Oh. A bit more character detail by actually seeing the nose. Okay, no, no, I thought the bracelet was indicating that she was talking to him, knowing that he wasn't alive. Okay, I thought this was a flash forward. No, no, they're just jumping right in. So that wasn't sad talking, that was practice talking. We're still going to see the breakdown. On the one hand, yay, drama. On the other hand, oh no, pain. Ezreal, are you alright? What's happened? Bad shit. Oh, god damn you. Cracking heart. Oh. Lost his sense. It actually grayed a bit of the determination. Trying to stay determined. But. Yeah. And that already is more damage to our frisk than we have seen in any boss who has literally killed her. Hell, the self-doubt, having to convince Sans, the entire fight with Sans. No, losing him, though. And when he died beforehand, you know, things happened. You know, he can come back. There's a reset. This time? Damn. Joe <laughs> Gasters. Oh, jo oh, the flower. Before she hurts someone else. You should probably say who that she is. Why is she sitting there? Oh, wow, it could just fully shape shift. It's just a ditto. They both do the eye thing. Don't waste energy on keeping me entertained, Kumu. Why are they being wholesome? Stop being wholesome. We need to save it for the soul harvest. It's gonna be crazy eyes when it opens. Hmm? Huh? That soul was enough? Huh? You can still drain magic from it? Huh? Does that mean we have enough energy to start our plan? Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's not good, is it? What plan? <laughs> Way to go, Kuma. And that's probably. What's her name? AMD lady. <laughs> Let's begin, shall we? Why are they giving her such cutesy effects? Because it's off-putting, that's why. Asgore in jail? We need to talk to him right now. Miss? Can't let you pass, miss. We have orders from... I know. From me? Yeah, I know. <sighs> she ain't dead? I need to talk with both monsters, actually. Please. There's blood in her hand, blood in there. People can just get around without souls? I thought everyone who didn't have one was just 
temporarily unalived until they got another body to match the soul. Because that's kind of what Frisk and Sans did. Sort of. I don't... Just... How do people even function without a soul? That's a weird question to ask, and way more philosophical than we'll get into. Score. Oh, actually, putting the dialogue. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, Poor to neighbors. Stand up, forgive me. Offer apology to this old king. Could have started with that. It saved a lot of trouble. Granted, when they stopped her, I think I was all just playing with them. I did something horrible. Can't ask for help. Everyone's in great danger. Seriously, losing her soul was the point where she realized, oh, this is a mistake. I mean, yeah, that's usually the point where people realize they just don't usually get the chance to live past that. <sighs> Even a monster died because of me. Oh, she just figured <sighs> out. Was it a skeleton monster? A short one? How did she find out so fast? He was... Papyrus was... Oh, Papyrus is already here. <sighs> Come with me. You have an apology to his brother. Ooh, I don't think you have time for apologies. Do you? Because Papyrus was in jail, yeah. Papyrus? Talk with you. It's about Sans. That feeling last night. Okay, they're doing something here that is a little weird in context. The show is making really good use of negative space and quiet, which the reason I'm saying it's weird is because this is a almost completely unvoiced show. Everything is quiet, minus the music, but it's little moments like this, just this right here, where you have the words up for a while and it can give the same effect as empty space in a movie where no one's talking, where the music kind of cuts down and the music's still going. But because that has been out there for a while and they don't switch away to a new scene, you just get that little bit of motion where the character is sliding to the side as the scene pans, but just them looking down, just that tiny bit of expression right here. It's really good usage because it takes you and focus your attention from the words up top so you read them. And then once you do there, then you see the movements of the eyes. Let's actually just go back a few seconds and watch this right here. Right here. And... That feeling last night? See, you hear that, you read up there, then you come down, and that's where you just see the eye moving. And because you're moving to the side, you're looking to that side already. Your eye's being drawn over there. And then as you see the movement, that's what your eye catches on, because that's how human thought works. We focus on movement a lot. So even though there's actually only a handful of moving pieces, and even though we have very little going on, it's giving that open space for us to instead focus on what's happening with the character's emotion. It's really well done. And the reason I'm pointing it out is because, God damn, is it sad? Because you're just seeing this moment right here of accepting shit just happened and it's bad. It's sad and there's just... He gets you right in the freaking feels, man. Oops, hit my mic. It's well done because it's drawing attention to exactly what you need to look at on the screen. Even though there's text up here, the dialogue doesn't exist, so that's not a factor. But it's simulating the same effect really well. And making it hurt more because of it. I know, but this is not the human who did that. No, no it's not. You'd be alive if it wasn't for me? Yeah, probably, and a lot of other people who you killed. Technically, you've probably killed more people incidentally than Asgore. I'm so sorry. I don't deserve anyone's forgiveness. Because partially this was you giving the rage and a literal walking annihilation bomb. Let me go back and... You... Through water. Paris, goddamn man. Can I forgive you? Oh! God damn! That is... Oh. So they didn't steal the soul unless they were stealing from Sans. 
I thought it was more gray than white, but maybe that's just my screen being off color. If it was Sansa's soul that was all white, I thought they stole her soul instead. In which case, they stole the power from hers, and it's coming back, not the actual soul itself, so not the container. <laughs> it was freaking Papyrus just forgiving her. Oh my god. Oh, I'm getting teary-eyed. Papyrus for the wind. She's going to do something stupid, isn't she? Frisk? No! Oh, Gaster. Because he knows exactly what that feeling meant, too. Human history. Altus. What happened here? Ah, uh, we have a good idea. Gaster. Got me last night. Tell me about Sans. He's not taking it pretty well. Yeah. Where is he? Who's he talking to? He's with someone. Are those stars that monsters craved to see for hundred years are nothing more than dead flames. Dr. Gaster. Oh, thank God it's Frisk. I believe I'm aware of what you came to tell me. Yeah. Not that, that thing. I must warn you, Frisk, in the conditions you are in right now, you don't stand a chance. Yeah. Hmm. There's only one determination still existing at the same time. The same with fear, Pink. Well, that's true. Only fear can defeat determination. Only determination can defeat fear as well. Uh... No, 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 don't you dare. Oh, come on, they're still reeling from the last one. Initially, I was going to pause to say that technically the way to beat fear is actually bravery, because bravery is literally overcoming fear, and determination just gets you to that point. I wonder if this means Frissa is going to have to change her soul to go orange and actually overcome fear. Huh. But at the same time, then I just saw this, and like that's a very distinct color. You're just calling out pink as a very distinct thing, and then you have the... Just, mm, there's something about to happen, you son of a bitch. Huh? Yeah. Risk. No, you should be afraid. Fear is something that can be overcome. Defeated. Your determination isn't. You have no limits, child. Remember that. It's growing. No. And it's moving. Now. Oh, no. Oh, they can do it in multiple places? Oh, jeez. Ooh. Flat out forming sword and shield. Nice. And the pink heart forms above them. Also, I like the music cutting in as soon as the fight starts. Bring it on. Because they are afraid. Are they forming fear monsters? How much power does he retain? A lot, apparently. Not as much as we've seen. She's actually hitting it with a romance novel. <laughs> oh my god. Are they operating or no matter how many times I hit it, it doesn't disappear. Burn it? No first. That's the issue. Fear doesn't go away. That wasn't strong enough. What? God damn! 
And of course, Gaster's the one who realizes first that, yeah, no, it's complete bullshit. Plus, he has the experience of actually doing that to him. As opposed to this version of Frisk, who didn't go that far and actually made a point to stop herself so she wouldn't. And it's, ah! The irony here being Kara, if she ever gets brought back because bullshit power reasons. I'm sure it'll happen just as an interesting effect. She'd probably have an easy time with this one because fuck everything. I'm going to say Kara's character. Oh, it's character, not character. Hmm. Character. So Kara. Kara? Kara. That's it. So, damn. I love it when they just put that shading effect. The camera pulling back. Oh, dude. Shit. Squaw. Whatever you're this thing planning, these blobs might be all around the city. Oh, they definitely are. There are already more than one place. Why would they limit themselves? Do they need to retreat to the underground? Us? What about you? He probably wants the stress relief. Dr. Alpha, I have a plan to stop this thing once for all. They have a plan already? Has it been a matter of hours? If that, we won't fail. He's reverting. I won't fail. Oh. Because Sans is part of what stabilized him. And I'm not sure how much. I thought he just needed the machine, but if he has that effect coming back, that might mean he's got a time limit. Ah. All right. Yeah, just a little fear. Try to stab her. Eat her. Nom nom. Asriel? You have to go to school. Probably everywhere. Yeah! Alphys, are you ready? For what? She's not liking this. And she's determined, though. Yes? What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I absolutely love this. Just as you're going, huh? Just that nonplussed face. It's just, after all this shit going on, it's just someone knocking at the door and I just, it's so freaking normal and they're freaking out she's like no don't care but that's the standard face asriel just having the little munchkin face i just <laughs> okay that's just perfect man it's such a mood switch from everything that's been happening so far and then just a little bit of humor like me uh, i actually really like this just because when you have too much of a single mood it becomes overwhelming which is not bad when you're at a climax or an incredibly important moment but I don't think we are at the climax of season two yet. And I don't mean climax of the episode. I mean climax of the season. When things can't stop, the rails are gone, and you're in free fall with rocket boosters shooting you straight into the pits of what the fuckery. We're not there yet. We're on the roller coaster of it, where there's probably going to be ups and downs. This is one of the ups for just that little moment of levity. Hopefully nothing horrible happens. Are you just knocking? Is that undine? Oh, it's Papyrus! if they're having a nap oh, get down oh shit hey, uh. hey office sorry about the door ah he's still mad at her for that yeah Lady, you did literally bring this on yourself. And Gaster's way more mad. Is she gonna survive? Or is someone gonna save her? Okay, one is probably... Papyrus? Papyrus would make the most sense to do right here. And just, he's out here just admiring the flowers. Uh, I wonder if that's where Asriel got it from. <laughs> it was Papyrus. Papyrus. Get out of the way. Also, good voice for him, too. <laughs> now, if you do, you'll hurt her. Or if I do, you'll hurt her. You and I felt it. As for her, he'd still be alive. Uh, hurting her won't bring him back either. The virus of the moral center won't turn up. Please don't kill him right away. 
She's sorry. Really, really sorry. She. Here to help. That's not good. Huh? huh? I... Her text has also changed color as well. No, you're looking for Dr. Gaster. Maybe did before I missed it. Can tell you exactly where she is. It says AMD on it. <laughs> Very well then. Hmm. Frisk. Nazriel, I'll tell where you both to the school. Hmm. Oh, he just wants to them out of there, doesn't he? Oh. I'll go with them too. <laughs> Wait, he wants to go? Oh, a little surprising. Miss Undyne. Oh, that's how you say it? Undyne? Well, as if you to make sure the civilians or humans are too vulnerable to these small monsters. Yeah. Uh, Why should I? It's all right. What? Mm. I'll be fine. Oh. Oh, please don't. Oh my! Did she just? She. Ah! Whoa! I just went too far. Ah. Uh, not as far as I thought, though. I think she just oo-wooed face, though. Miss Undyne. Wait for it. Uh, She's all gruff, right. rough, and then Alphys is just like, oh, right? Mm. Smiling and... Wait for it, wait for it. Oh my god, they actually did the full-on kitty lips. Oh, dear god. Oh, freaking kitty lips. Mm. And then she just realized she did the oo-woo and just chills. If you say so, mm. Doc, you may come here and wait for us when you're done. <sighs> Gaster, wait. She doesn't want to go. Just, Or is it he? I've actually heard multiple people say conflicting things about this. Including the one that it's still not what? determined so you can fill in your blanks. <laughs> Play? Oh. <sighs> Sure, Dad. This is probably the first interaction we've seen from them since the second season. Hmm. Oh, with him being in jail. Run, run, run. And yeah, they're definitely... Run. They have refugee rooms? Go away. Oh, yeah. Oh, he can use the power. But it's strong. Is the school mm. with the powered kids, yeah. Because they start to use their soul magic. <sighs> Why aren't they showing the face? Oh, because they're just showing... They're saving that as a reveal, aren't they? I'll take care of this. Core's expansion facility? Oh, they actually started that. The instructions. Dr. Alphys? Mm -hmm. That and you're still in there? Oh, no. Under any circumstances, he's doing the sacrificial play, isn't he? That is a last resort measure. I have no intention to leave the room until that thing is erased from its miserable existence. That thing? What do they have contained? Dr. Gaster. She'll enter in 10 seconds. Oh, okay, it's her. They're baiting her in, and he's not going to like what Close happens. The door. How would she's been able to teleport the nullifier room? Oh, <laughs> creepiness! Hmm. You're the first of your kind. I'll make sure you're the last. <laughs> Red for determination. This is. Some I wonder what those actually say. Again, I don't know how to read wingdings. People have translated, though. Damn! Okay, yeah, this is way more detail in the movements than before. I think it's some nice ones. Normally, this is where I say, this is lit in a cool fight because there's really good animation. But that music in the background, man, um, like, listen to this and don't tell me that's just a 
Harbinger of, oh shit, no, no, she's having fun with him still. I cracked the shield. Blasted his own shield. And it was fine. Fully embraced. The same move. Oh god, even the dripping! Ugh. Oh, when they're fully merged. She's just freaking having fun here. Was that enough to Ruby? God damn. And she's just feeding while this is happening. What were we looking for again? Oh. They already showcased exactly what's going on here. the mini-her could copy her form identically because they looked exactly the same. They think she's in the trap. She's probably not. That's probably just another one of the blobs. Or maybe Kumu. Because it's probably them in two places at once. Ah! Can you find her? Please! Help me find her? Oh, we're just going to see a bunch of... Uh, why are... Aw, oh, dude! They're not going to look like how this analyzes them. Chris? No. Wow. Help us! My sister. She should be around here. Now, which one... Thank you. I'm actually wondering right now which one of these people is an illusion being replaced because if they have illusion powers all they need is to just draw someone around fuck with them which is normally like a complete waste of energy but on the other hand as we've been shown bet noah or betty really likes screwing around with people for fun she's definitely getting enjoyment out of this how yeah, with their help find doing all this chaos power determination Lily! oh or she's literally right there I'll go, I'll cover you. Risk is definitely taking this hard. Gaster's tired. He's fighting a nullifier too. Is it just the walls? Oh! Mm -hmm. Oh, they're taking it seriously. How long until we can use that Kumu? Or they're actually there. They're eating a lot of people. Now? Their hair is getting more and more pink. Just a few more. Yeah. Nullifier. Humans and monster exterminator. Mm -hmm. Come on, Gaster. We're done here, child. I'm ending this. Ah, that's never a good thing. I don't like his chances. The buzz off. Oh my god. Does he have a freaking buzzsaw whip of power? Oh! Faint! Or faint. Hmm? Right in the face. <laughs> oh! He caught Kumo. Can they be separated? Oh? White? Oh, it's the power! He's really mad. What? <laughs> Why'd they go full pink? That's probably not going to be enough, is it? Ah. Thing is, if Sans was alive, maybe he would have had the power. Lily! But they seem to have got what they needed. There. Lily's going to be the last when they eat, huh? Thank you. Oh no. Kumu? Oh, they actually did damage. Hmm. There you are. 
Oh, they actually care for each other. No surprising. Ooh, double voice. <laughs> Dude. If only... I could get... Two more. Oh, just one. The brother. Oh, this isn't good. Robbed a phone. Oh! Inverted the colors? Nothing's happening. Did he... Did she just turn off magic? No, because they're still there. Her outfit is entirely pink, isn't it? What? Oh! That's not good! Oh, no. You son of a bitch, you're playing an altered version of Megalovania in the background because she's freaking taking it over. She... Ah... I can't make them disappear. And the windings are back. No. She stole all his power. He ain't dead yet. But pink hand. So she's even able to use more power through it. And his face is cracking again. Plan B after all. No. <laughs> what? The heart. Oh, they actually moved in. How much will that power suppressor gun help? Kill them, Kuvin. Green? Oh, Just she has a shield ball. Use the teleport. Gassed her out. No! No, 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 no! You. F oh, they're gonna. Oh, no. They're getting him out because he's. Uh, this is sacrificing Alphys, isn't it? Oh. Gaster failed to kill her. I was supposed to activate a trap. So she's activating it. Oh, fuck again. Okay. <laughs> Definitely the music thing right now. Quick. She actually made power balls. Oh, God. Is that something from the game, or is she just that crazy? It's about to get out. Another one! <laughs> now you have to break in. What? Hopefully that'll be enough. Initiating nullifier. Come back here. Shield will hide me from the nullifier. Because it's not monster power, but it's nullifying humans to do. When it does, I'll be over. It'll only identify them. Oh, so it does target. Any human or monster standing in its way. Strange subjects. Initiating extermination. Is that really a cat face? The nullifier is a freaking cat face hologram? Oh my god. I don't like, I'm gonna like how this goes. They're back. Alphys? No! No. Plan to kill that thing, and if you believe that, she's 
she's fast, but is she that fast? Ending elimination sequence? I don't think she's dead. No, the smoke hasn't cleared it. Don't you dare to celebrate. Who told you I was a monster? Or even a human? So they're not part of each. Oh, she's coming at the worst possible time! waiting for some kind of hologram shenanigans to fuck around and this is so much worse I thought it would be the kids like just luring him into a trap just showing that level of control and evil but no it's just her inflicting pain hmm I could kill her right now and then deal with you or I could let you do it for me oh she literally tricked her into killing Alphys that's worse And she stole the power. Ah. Trembling within the breeze, I can feel my soul. Oh, yeah, beautiful song. Making it so much more hurtful. Even with a single blow, everything and she's disappearing too. Using every ounce of strength just to keep myself from. Because that's probably the one attack that matters more. That's not avenging it. That's knowing it's your fault. Holding on to everything, even when my body shatters. I will never let you pass, even when my tears run dry. Beating with our hearts as <laughs> one. Strike you down to And that's where the title comes from. <sighs> okay, I was not ready for that. I I knew this was gonna get bad. People warned me. This is going to get bad. People are going to die. You're going to get fucked in the head and your heart is going to be like, <laughs> nope. But the level of cruelty involved here, it's not even just the little fake out of like, oh yeah, I guess he's going to die. And then they don't really play it up with the music. So you kind of know something's going to happen. He's probably not going to die. But then the Alpha's death, that was telegraphed. But how it was such a freaking change? And it's so much worse. And then Undyne just... <sighs> breaking a bit, having your soul actually start to break. Partially from probably getting stabbed and I'm assuming more because she just killed Alphys. Tricked into it or not, that is terrible. And she just pulls herself together to fight right at the end. And considering this is only going to be episode four for that fight, most likely, I don't think I need to guess how that ends. Really good music, though. Really good positioning of it so that it sounded really sad and mournful. Right up until it just picks up just a tiny little bit, becomes a bit more impactful when you show Undyne bunkering down, putting that smile on, getting in the armor, and you know it's about to go down. The pace didn't pick up, but just that little bit of extra emphasis really complemented the animation there well. Really good music composition. The animations in this were good. But it, this is very much a filler episode. Unfortunately, the filler is just your heart with pain. Uh, also, my camera's being weird today. I'm just going to go watch Kittens for a bit. I'll see you guys in the next one.
I swear, it's like, I love this series, but it is already pretty nasty. And people keep saying, the first half is the fun and easy, lighthearted one. Why would you say that? I don't even know if you're joking. I thought you were, but now I'm not sure, because if this is the fun and lighthearted stuff... <sighs> yeah, I don't know what I'm getting into. It's probably going to be good, but it's going to hurt. Basically, what I'm saying is, if you haven't already, there's a link below to the original video. I'm going to try and put product like uh, listings for anything I have in my setup just because it makes it easier if you're trying to get it something. Like, hey, if you need a mic, I got it there. Same with the arm, amp. I'll just try and put things in if I remember to. So it's easier to find out what I'm using if you want to do it yourself. And then just, you know, film yourself recording reactions to this, which I'm not saying you should. I'm saying explicitly you should because I kind of like watching other people do this as well. It's literally how I spend too much time. If I'm ever late on a video, it's because I'm watching someone else do something I've already done because I just think it's fun. I'm weird. I realize that. But more importantly, I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to go watch those cat videos now. Yeah.